Well, I didn't think that the New Orleans Saints were going to be able to pull it off, but they did. Chase Young is a New Orleans Saint. We got all that and a little bit of land yap for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdat Nation and Houdat family? I am your host, Ross Jackson, New Orleans native, your New Orleans Saints expert and credential member of the media covering those New Orleans Saints as a senior writer and reporter over at Saints News Network. And on today's episode, the New Orleans Saints have signed or are expected to sign defensive end Chase Young. We're going to break down what that means from three different perspectives. We'll look at the NFL draft because the selection process for the New Orleans Saints, it's an entirely new strategy thanks to Chase Young. Young. We're also going to take a look at building a defensive line rotation with Chase Young, a part of it. So we'll get into a little bit of the X's and O's there. And to start us all off, how does this impact and change the New Orleans Saints defense? Because it absolutely does. We got all that coming up for you today. We appreciate you very much for being an every day or making us your first listen of the day every day here on the Locked on Saints podcast, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. In today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends over at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked on for $20 off of your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. The New Orleans Saints are expected to sign Chase Young to a one-year $13 million deal, and it changes their defense dramatically. Now, look, I said it. I wasn't sure the New Orleans Saints were going to be able to offer Chase Young the role that he was going to want, so I considered them long shots in terms of landing Chase Young. And here we go again for the third season in a row. They bring in a free agent that everybody thinks that they might not be able to sign or that some of us think that they might not be able to sign in this case. And they find a way to sign him. Uh, uh, Tyra Matthew and, and Jarvis Landry years ago, a couple years ago, uh, Derek Carr last year, and then now, of course, Chase Young. So the Saints, despite all of the salary cap, this, that, and the other, and the truthers, and oh, all these other things, and how the Saints do that, they still manage to pull off these signings each and every year. So uh, how is it that Chase Young impacts the Saints defense? Well, the fact of the matter is that it changes it pretty drastically. Um, so here's the big thing that I think Chase Young has the most immediate impact on, and it's getting after the quarterback with speed, getting after the quarterback quickly as a constant part of your defense. The Saints have characteristically and typically been a defense whose pass rushers get there because the coverage held up and the quarterback holds on to the football. It's a second, third effort, four or five seconds into the snap, or, or, or rather, you know, into the play after the snap. Chase Young is a speed guy that can get around the end. He's got a little bit of power, but mostly a speed guy who can get around the edge and get after your quarterback like that. And that's an element that we haven't seen for the New Orleans Saints since, what, Alex Okafor was maybe the closest that we've seen? Now, I know Zach Vaughn kind of brought that a little bit last year, but we're talking the last five games last year, and really only three of those five games. Caden Ellis, towards the back half of the 2022 season, definitely was a part of that as well. But just looking at a guy that's going to be able to, from game one through 17, should he stay healthy, and we're going to discuss that here in a second as well, but should he stay healthy, ends up giving you something you haven't had consistently for a while right? Like the Saints have always been the speed to power conversion guy, the high motor, the, you know, the, the wear down the offensive line deep into the, I call it the snap clock. So the, the ticking seconds after the snap, that's always sort of been their style when it came to pass rush. Now, all of a sudden that changes with a Chase Young. Chase Young can run the arc. He can bend, he can get around the edge and he can do it quickly. I mean, you know, when you're in an NFL right now that wants to get the ball out of quarterback's hands as quickly as possible, you have to have pass rushers that can get to that quarterback as quickly as possible. Even if it just means not necessarily getting the sack, but moving that quarterback off the spot, making them hold the ball for a little bit longer, disrupting the rhythm of an offense. This is one of the places where the Saints have been lackluster, right? It's one of the reasons why they've been so uh, you know, that they, that they, or I guess the other thing that this ends up helping them out with is, you know, mitigating the mobile quarterback situation. But when you look around the NFC South, the division that you're trying to win, 
Bryce Young, Baker Mayfield have mobility, but they want to throw from the pocket. Kirk Cousins wants to throw from the pocket, so disrupt the pocket. And that's what Chase Young helps you do. So I think Chase Young dramatically changes some complexion of this defense. This is a defense that will now all of a sudden go from having to have the back end hold up for five, six seconds <laughs> to being one that is benefited now by the fact that the defensive line will be able to get there quickly. Then you also factor in the speed that they added with Willie Gay at the second level. Surely they'll utilize that. You know, they'll utilize Willie Gay to rush the passer supplemental as well. So I think that that changes the way that the Saints defense um, is able to play. Doesn't repurpose them, doesn't, you know, change their philosophy or anything like that, but it definitely adds a layer to their defense that they've been looking for. The Saints desperately wanted a pass rusher this offseason. They got one. So now the questions are, A, how does this impact the Saints draft? I'm sorry, not draft, uh, salary cap, right? In In terms of talking about like the big impact for New Orleans. We don't know fully yet. I imagine that a good portion of that fully guaranteed $13 million is on a signing bonus. And I imagine some portion of that is, you know, probably prorated into void years and and stuff. We'll update that throughout the week. But this is less money than the Saints spent on Marcus Davenport's fifth year option. And you're probably going to get better production than that. Low bar was that the half sack season. They had more ejections than sacks that year. I, I think you can expect to get at least better than that from Chase Young, assuming that he stays healthy. And so now that's the, that's the next piece, right? Is health, effort, right? Those are the two big conversations around Chase Young pretty consistently. And I think that that's where having a rotation of players um, as pass rushers ends up helping you quite a bit if you're the Saints, if you're Chase Young. And that's maybe where the rotational role that the Saints have to offer maybe actually carried a little bit more weight than I gave it credit for is that with the rotational role, you're not expected to play 40, 50 snaps every game. And so you can hold up a lot longer. Um, The effort is going to be, you know, you're not going to be able to take plays off because you're only going to get so many plays. You have to maximize those. And I love the fact that this is just a one-year deal, believe it or not. It's great for Chase Young. If I were Chase Young, I wouldn't have accepted anything but a one-year deal because I want to get back onto the market next offseason. Like if I have a good season here in 2024, I want to get out to the market and I want to make money. And for New Orleans, that's the motivating factor for the effort conversation too, is if you want to go out there and make money this offseason, whether it's here in New Orleans or elsewhere, the effort has to be there. And so we'll see. We'll see. But I I think that this is a, a, I still think this was a good move for New Orleans. I just didn't think they were going to be able to pull it off. And now here we are. They pulled it off. Chase Young is a New Orleans Saint or is expected to be a New Orleans Saint. And uh, I think it changes their defense or adds a layer to their defense that we haven't seen for quite some time. So now how do you build that rotation? How do you best maximize Chase Young? Let's get to the X's and O's here as we continue on with this emergency episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Well, Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost to every dollar that you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar that you transfer from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. And that's right, no cap on that 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most out of your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info, claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing does involve risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of your first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching and transfers are subject to uh, terms and conditions. Uh, Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. All right, family. What would a rotation look like for the New Orleans Saints now that they've added Chase Young? How do you maximize Chase Young, Cam Jordan, Carl Grandison, Peyton Turner, Isaiah Foskey, and Tano Passanio? All these guys that have the ability to rush from the edge for you. We're going to be breaking that down here as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. Appreciate you as always 
Making us your first listen of the day every day, and especially on days like this where you might be making us your, uh, you might actually be making a second listen here with Locked On Saints. We very much appreciate that. And don't forget to check out Locked On Sports today, the na- first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube, including March 20th at 7 p.m., the best MLB season preview you're going to find. Again, that's March 20th, 7 p.m. on the Locked On Sports today YouTube streaming channel or on the free Fire TV uh, channels app. So, How do you maximize Chase Young when you have five other edge rushers? Cam Jordan, Carl Granderson, Isaiah Foskey, um, Peyton Turner, and Tono Passanio. Now, Tono Passanio, I'm going to call kind of a tweener-ish because they also like to move him on the inside and things like that. So, so how do you do, how do you like maximize this? So there's a couple of things to, to watch out for. First of all, do all six of these players make the final roster, make the 53? Or do we see a little bit of a battle somewhere where it's really five spots or something like that? We'll kind of have to see how this all plays out. But for now, let's just entertain all six being on the roster. How do you maximize uh, Chase Young, Carl Granderson, Cam Jordan in particular, and then Tano Passanio and and, and, and your younger guys and Peyton Turner and Isaiah Foskey? So let's look at this from a down-by-down perspective as we kind of focus in here. and passing, like obvious passing situations, right? So first and 10, or not all obvious passing situations, but obvious passing situations on third down is what I mean to say. So on first down, you want to have your guys out there that are going to be able to defend the run and rush the passer. So I think then you're looking at Carl Granderson and Cam Jordan. Now on the interior, you're looking at, you know, some, some, you know, mix and match of Brian Brzee and Colin Saunders and Nathan Shepard and others. Um, and maybe even a ton of pass and yo, maybe a draft pick. We're going to get to that here in just a little bit. We'll get to that just a bit. Um, but when it comes to the edge, you want to have your guys out there that are proven run stoppers and pass rushers. And I think Carl Granison and Cam Jordan kind of hold that for you. Um, now, as you get later on in games and then deficit increases and things like that, even on first and 10, it could feel like an obvious passing situation. And so if it's an obvious passing situation to where you're up in the fourth quarter by, let's call it 10 points with four minutes left and they, and you know, your defense is on the field, then yeah, you probably actually want Carl Granderson and Chase Young out there, right? Like those are your two, pin your ears back and get after the quarterback. Now, one of the things you're going to hear a lot about is should the New Orleans Saints move Cam Jordan to the defensive interior? I'd be surprised if they went that route. They very much like Cam Jordan on the outside. I don't know that Cam particularly likes playing on the inside either, but you've got other guys to do that with, Tono Passanio and Peyton Turner, guys that they've already done that with. So I think you would see that still be a part of the rotation. Second down, you're kind of in between the potential pass, the potential run, all those other things, whether it's second and long, whether it's second and short, whatever it might be, you have to be ready for both. So I think then... What you're really seeing there is a rotation on the interior, guys that maybe you know are bigger run stuffers or, or, or you know run stuffers like a uh, uh, Colin Saunders. Maybe he comes off the field and Nathan Shepard rotates in, and then that's your your down four to where you're looking at Carl Granderson and Cam Jordan still on the edge, um, depending upon what the game situation is. And then maybe you have some other guys on the interior that are a little bit more pass rushers, but you're still tuned up to stop the run in that case. Now, if you're in a second and 10, and again, you're up by 10 with three minutes left in the game or whatever, and it feels like an obvious passing situation, then I think you probably still go Carl Granderson and Cam Jordan, but then maybe you are looking more at those pass rushers on the interior. So maybe it's a ton of Passigno and Brian Brzee at that point, so you have those pass rushers. Now, you can cycle in Chase Young wherever you want. He can be in place of Cam Jordan. He can be in place of Carl Granderson, things like that. It's going to depend upon the game situation, but you know, there's a role there for him for sure. Now, third down on an obvious passing situation, this is where I think this gets really, really fun. I think then what you're really looking at are two, two, two different options. The NASCAR package, which is four down linemen, but three of them are edge rushers. And for me, for my money, Carl Granderson, Chase Young on the outside, Brian Brzee, Tono Passanio in the middle. That's the way that I'm looking at that. Four guys that can just attack, right? And you get that NASCAR package. You get that additional athleticism and speed with a ton of passing you on the interior. You know Brian Brzee brings athleticism to the interior as well already. I think complementing the two of those guys with the speed and athleticism off the edge when it comes to Carl Granderson and Chase Young, super fun. The other piece is looking at 
the three, like the odd front, right? You know, the Saints will do this sometimes where they shift to a dime package on third down. When they shift that dime package on third down, it's an edge, like an edge defender, an edge defender, and a nose tackle, right? And then you have two linebackers that are kind of teasing the A gap on either side of that defensive tackle in the middle, and then two safeties over on the outside. We call it an Oki front. O K I O O K I E. There we go. Um, I think with that, boy, you could have a lot of fun. Maybe that's where Cam Jordan comes in as a you know interior guy. You have him right in the middle of the defense there. Then you've got Carl Granderson and Chase Young over on the outside, or it's still Brian Brzee, right? They love Brian Brzee in that situation. He performed well in that situation last year as well. Um, you can also move Brian Brzee outside and then shift some of these other guys on the inside. Like, there's a lot of fun stuff that you're going to be able to do here. And so this is where I think that a guy like Todd Grantham really comes in handy for the New Orleans Saints, which is their defensive line coach they added last year. Todd Grantham is very much about allowing uh, players to make plays on the defensive line and also allowing players to do what it is that is most in their bag. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot more of the like, what are you best at? Great, go out and do that. Not, what are you best at? Okay, that's cool, but we need you to do this. You know what I mean? Like those types of things. And so I really, really think that this could be a lot of fun for New Orleans in terms of what that rotation could look like. The last thing that I want to entertain here is what does this mean for the younger guys like Peyton Turner and Isaiah Foskey? And in particular, like Isaiah Foskey is the one that I kind of, you know, zoom in on a little bit because at least Peyton Turner has a role if you move him inside and then, you know, you can kind of utilize him uh, in his versatility in the way that you maximize Tono Passigno, right? Like you, you can kind of one for one between those two guys, but where does Isaiah Foskey fit in? And so I think that's kind of like the, the person, like if there's a loser, not a loser, but if there's somebody that's like threatened in this situation, it's not Cam Jordan, it's not Carl Granderson, it's not Tono Passigno, it's not Peyton Turner, it's kind of Isaiah Foskey, right? He was just drafted last year in the second round, you know, dealt with injury, but did have some moments um, when he was out there. And then now all of a sudden, before you go into your second year, here comes Chase Young, former number two overall selection, former defensive rookie of the year, walks onto the field and says, okay, well, now I'm here. And I think Isaiah Foskey is the guy that maybe is a little bit, is the one that is poised to receive the biggest threat with Chase Young being present. He might not be threatened, but he's the one that's poised to kind of, you know, see the biggest threat in terms of what his future could look like in New Orleans. But I think, I mean, like you look at the rotation and all that stuff. And again, the rotation helps keep him healthy, helps keep him fresh, helps him maximize effort. One year deal helps you maximize effort. A lot of good stuff there. So um, yeah, I can see how this works for the New Orleans Saints big time. And I can also see how this changes everything going into a little bit over a month from now to the NFL draft, because now you don't have to go edge rusher in the first round. And the Saints also added an offensive tackle today and a little bit of a sneaky ad because that's going to fall way under the radar with Chase Young having been added. Let's add all of that in and let's redo another mock draft Monday just for funsies. We got that coming up for you as we continue on and wrap up today's episode of Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. The Game Time app is my absolute go-to anytime that I want to check out any kind of event wherever I am, whether I'm in town, out of town, whether I want sports, music, or I want like a concert or something like that, you want theater, comedy shows, they've got everything that you're looking for over on the Game Time app. They've also got fantastic prices, all inclusive pricing as well, to where there's not a lot of those like surprises, hidden fees, stuff like that. Like you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Just transparency all around. You can even see a view from the seats before you buy the tickets as well. So take all of the guesswork out of buying tickets by using the Game Time app today. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked On for $20 off of your first purchase. Locked On's all one word there. Again, terms apply, create an account, and use that promo code Locked On, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, all one word, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Let's get it, Houdat Nation. Chase Young changes the way that things look for the New Orleans Saints going into the NFL draft a little bit over a month from now. Let's break it down in terms of what it ends up meaning for New Orleans. Don't forget, we are your team every day, so tomorrow we'll have more information. Uh, we're going to be discussing this Chase Young signing for a little bit. Uh, the thing, that, next thing that I really want to look at when it comes to Chase Young 
is how the addition of Chase Young not only impacts the defense like we discussed today, but each individual group, right? We talked about kind of the rotation of the defensive line, but how does this help the second level? How does this help the secondary? How does this help the offense? There's a lot to really look at in all of this. And then of course, once we get the contract structure for all of it, we'll be able to provide like the right salary cap updates, all that good stuff. So if you want to keep up with all that locked on saints every single day, we're right here with you every single weekday. We're right here with you. I wanted to, before I, I, I discuss kind of how this impacts the saints draft and it will do, it's going to be a little bit, we'll, we'll stay in the, the, the theme of mock draft Monday. We'll, we'll look at some like this, that, or the other kind of things. Uh, not a full seven round mock draft, but the, the other thing that I want to look at here is a, 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 a post that Jordan Schultz insider, NFL insider from over at Bleacher Report um, I mentioned, friend of the show, uh, said, I'm told that Chase Young's recruiting pitch started at dinner last night with all pro safety, Tyron Matthew, head coach, Dennis Allen, defensive coordinator, Joe Woods, and defensive line coach, Todd Grantham. So they wind and dined them. They brought everybody out there. Tyron Matthews out there helping to recruit. I mean, goodness, like this is just like what I was talking about earlier as well as in like the the earlier episode today too that like the saints have have kind of been you know hitting well when it comes to these visits all of a sudden i think we're really used to kind of like the indomitian sues and the 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 jadavian clownies where they're like all right free dinner you know what i mean sometimes so it felt like that um this felt a lot more you know this is this is another third year in a row to where like they land the guy that they're after and really the only exceptions that are out there, the Saints recently having bring having brought somebody in uh, for a visit and not being able to sign them was like Kareem Hunt, who never even showed up, uh, right? Because he he was told, you know, he was like, hey, we got another opportunity over here. Let's 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 figure that out by his representation. So he never even came. And then um, and then Anthony Barr, right? Like those are the only two guys. So not not really needle movers for you, but the needle movers have been have been staying. And so it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And I love the fact that the Saints were able to get it done. Like not only did I not not only did I think of them as long shots to la- to land Chase Young because of the role that was going to be offered, I didn't think that they were going to be able to get him to not leave the building. You know what I mean? So like, hey, um, that's 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 one of those things where like you're happy to be wrong in some cases, and and I love that for New Orleans. Uh, so how does this change their draft strategy? Well, it's an entirely new draft strategy now for the New Orleans Saints. You are a little bit more freed up to kind of let things kind of fall as they will at 14 and seriously just go best player available. So now like other options start to become available to you. Quinion Mitchell, the defensive tackle, I mean, excuse me, the defensive tackle. What is wrong with me? The cornerback out of Toledo all of a sudden becomes like an option. Cooper DeGene as well, the, the, the defensive back, very versatile defensive back out of Iowa. Uh, Brock Bowers falls. Now all of a sudden you can start to talk about that. You know, now all of a sudden, like I can start to talk about that. Like I would begin to feel comfortable with that kind of a signing. When you land a Chase Young, that takes over what I thought what I thought of as the Saints' biggest need, just like reading the room from where the Saints' mentality was, was edge rusher. Um, they weren't looking at offensive line as like a major need. Like they feel good about where Ryan Ramchick is. They feel good about giving Trevor Penning another run. I think you got to figure out who your left guard's going to be, James Hurst, Nick Saldaveri, whatever. Um, but I don't think you're in a situation here to where you're going like, oh, okay, well, you, gotta, you have to go out there and find a new starter. You can. If they're there at 14 and Olu Fashanu out of Penn State's right there, yeah, sure, snack them up. Like that's that's what it ends up being. But then you're going BPA. You're not just like moving for a position. So what I wanted to do was kind of look at Mock Draft Monday, re-examine Mock Draft Monday in another way. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we did a like this, that, or the other kind of a mock. And I, I kind of want to present that same kind of idea to you today. You could go offensive line in the first round. I think defensive tackle, defensive interior is kind of becoming a thing where you're like, okay, well, maybe that's a, that's a pool that you could dip into, right? Um, so if you were to do, let's say, offensive tackle in round one. So let's say you get, let's say you don't get the top guys, right? Let's say you don't get Joe Alt, obviously. You don't get Olu Fashanu, who doesn't fall. You don't get Talisa Fuaga, who's going to be you know, out, of, out of Oregon State. But let's say like you have the option to take a, a, a Troy uh, Fatanu, who's probably going to be more of a an interior offensive lineman, but let's just say you address offensive line in the first round, okay? Him, Tyler Guyton, JC Latham, whomever, right? Any of those guys. Um, and then you turn around the second round at 45, and then you draft a Tavondre Sweat, the defensive tackle out of Texas, or a Braden Fiske, the athletic defensive tackle out of Florida State. And then you spend the rest of your draft just kind of identifying the talent that you want and going to get them, right? Opens up the opportunity for you to really start trading up, moving around, all these other things. So that could be an option. So let's say, let's say your first round is 
best possible scenario, Olu Fashanu, okay? The defensive, or excuse me, the offensive tackle rather out of Penn State. So let's say first round is off, is, is Olu Fashanu. Second round, let's say you go Tavondre Swift, the defensive tackle out of Texas. Great athleticism, just a big, big guy that moves incredibly well, super strong, all those defensive interior, just buster. Like he's just one of those dudes that will just bust up the inside of an offensive line. No problem. Then you go to Braden Fisk, Braden Fisky, excuse me. Um, you know, another guy, athletic, not really the guy that's like as big as a Tavondre Swift, but somebody that can still be extremely disruptive in the middle of a defense, all those other things has a little bit more speed. Athleticism kind of gives you another athletic pairing. Cam Jordan liked him during the combine. Gave you a little bit of an athletic pairing with, uh, um, with the already athletic Brian Brzee. Not bad. Let's look at another way. You can go defensive tackle now in the first round. Uh, uh, Byron Murphy out of, um, out of Texas, right? The other, other big time defensive tackle out of Texas, who right now is kind of entering DT1 categories. Okay, He might be the first defensive tackle off the board. If it's not him, then it's Illinois' Johnny Newton formerly Jazan Newton. Um, so let's say that you go with either one of those. Let's say uh, I, I'm, I'm a Newton guy myself. I actually liked him when there were the conversations about him coming out last year. I liked him as the first round selection for New Orleans, for instance, if he would have still been on the board. I don't think he would have been on the board by the time that they would have gotten to the bottom of that first round there. But with that being the case, let's say you get Johnny Newton in the first round, and then in the second round, you go Xavier Leggett. Right? Or you go Patrick Paul, the offensive tackle out of Houston. Or you go wide receiver. You can go Xavier Leggett in the second round. You can go Ladd McConkey in the second round. You can go Malachi Corley in the second round, all that. So let's just pick one. Let's say you've got Olu Fashanu in the first, Braden Fiske in the second. Let's just say that, right? That's option one. Option two, maybe you go Johnny Newton in the first, Xavier Leggett in the second. Option three, you go Johnny Newton in the first. And then you go uh, Patrick Paul in the second, the offensive tackle out of Houston, very athletic, all this, all that. Pretty good situation, right? Here's the other opportunity that now lies before the New Orleans Saints. And this is, this is the like pie in the sky kind of a thing. Okay, so just, just bear with me. It's not going to feel realistic, but we never know how the draft shakes out, all this other stuff. If we look at any, any mock drafts out there, Let's go and see, see our friends over at the Draft Network. Um, if you look at like any mock draft out there, and we try to find where the third wide receiver comes off the board. Okay, So right now I'm looking at uh, Ryan Fowler's mock draft from over at the Draft Network. Okay, So then we look at the first wide receiver coming off the board being Marvin Harrison Jr. to the Arizona Cardinals in this mock draft. Right, just, let's, let's just use this as, as our base. Um, you've got him right there to the Arizona Cardinals. Then at five, Malik Neighbors goes off the board. When the Giants are about to go up on the board, you see like this little bit of a run. Are you tempted to move up for Roma, Roma Tense? Like, do you move up for the Washington wide receiver? And are you in a situation now to where maybe you can, you have that flexibility? Let's look at another one. This one is uh, our good friend Damian Parson, who's the, uh, one of the co-hosts, him and Keith Sanchez over at Locked on NFL Draft. And you, that's definitely one to look at. They, they actually like to mock to the Saints, edge rushers. So with that, does this change that? So they're going to be a lot of fun to watch out for over the course of the next little bit. But Roman Dense doesn't come off the board until 11, which originally had the Chargers trading up to that spot. Now, that's going to be a little bit tricky because now what you're looking at is a team prob like Minnesota at 11 is very likely taking both of their new first round picks and trying to move up for a quarterback. But if you wanted to jump up four spots to pick 10, if a Dunze still on the board, with the New York Jets, a team that you have traded with before, a la Teddy Bridgewater. And then you move up to 10 and then snag him off the board. Who cares about the rest of the draft at that point, right? Like, what a move. Pie in the sky, right? Call me whatever you want to call me. It's okay. Everything like that. But I'm just saying that now all of a sudden the aggressive option is now back in the fold for the New Orleans Saints in the first round. This is why you address your needs in free agency. And don't wait until the NFL draft. Not a bad situation. So tell me, out of those, Olu Fashano in the first round, you can go Johnny Newton in the first round, you can go Byron Murphy in the first round, you could go 
uh, a trade up for a wide receiver in the first round. Out of all those, which one would you like? I'm a Johnny Newton guy myself. I'm all about a Johnny Newton guy. I'm all, I am all about Johnny Newton as a Johnny Newton guy. But look, great signing for the New Orleans Saints. I didn't think they were going to be able to pull it off. Didn't think they were going to be able to pull it off, but yet here we are. Here we are yet again. All of the cap nerds are shouting what? They can't keep getting away with this. And here's the crazy thing. Yes, they can. We appreciate you very much. Make a like. Don't say it's your first listen of the day every day. We'll be back with you here tomorrow. In the meanwhile, make sure you go and check out Locked on Pelicans and Locked on LSU. Thank you for making us a part of your day, part of your routine, for saying yes to me and the show. As always, if you see me, please say hi. And if you need anything else around your New Orleans Saints in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on your favorite social media at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how you're moming them. And trust you, that nation, I'll holla at you.